Okay, I'm on. So, um, a guy on YouTube said something about the quote unquote Texas method the other day and was asking me about that, which is more or less uh, where you just start them in a grazer bit and, and go on. And, uh, you know, some in some ways that's kind of looked down on. I've done it a bunch, I've started a bunch of colts in this grazer bit. It's a Kelly Brothers, an old Kelly Brothers bit. Um, I've started a bunch of colts in this and, and then just that's all I ever rode them in. And then, you know, just advanced them onto a finished horse. And so this horse, if you've been watching the Patreon deals and stuff like that, uh, started in a Hackmore and then I went to a Snaffle and then I put him in kind of a poor man's two rein uh, underneath this very bit and now I'm kind of just riding him in this bit and so what I'm doing right here this is called squall reining so it's direct rein and indirect rein and we just over time gradually start to to bring it to where it's that indirect rein he's coming off of and you see he's not quite there and here this is squall reining the other way and I'm, I'm kind of over over exaggerating it because I can I can ride this horse and go do a job on him and go cowboy on him with everything in one hand here and squall rein him around and get done what I need to do. It's just a, just a matter of rain man rain management and figuring out how to use your hands on those reins. But what I'm doing with this horse, uh, I just showed you the squall rein part because that's kind of where I where I test where he's at. What I've been doing with this horse is crossing my reins. And so with the reins crossed, he gets that, that indirect rein and that direct rein on its own. And I don't have to, I can just ride him straight up with, with my hand, like he's truly in the bridle. And it just kind of helps me, helps me help him learn. And so what I'll do, is I won't uh, I won't try to do a bunch of maneuvers or lope a bunch of circles this way or or uh, anything like that. What I'll do if I was on the ranch when I was you know trotting to work or trotting to the cattle or trotting home or or all the in between work stuff, I'd cross my reins like this and just steer him around. And so that's what I've been doing on him the last couple of days is is just getting on him in here in the yard, and going out in the desert and just kind of tooling around. Um, I'm, I'm making up busy work for myself. I go go check the gate that I know is shut because I went and checked it yesterday. Um, but just making up busy work and going around bushes and this and that and trying to develop that handle. <clears throat> and this is, in in some senses, a little bit of a gimmicky gag of uh, crutch kind of a thing. Not gag, but a little bit of a gimmicky crutch kind of a thing. Um, but but I'm using it and I'm just using it as a tool to help advance him. And I'll go back and forth and see where I'm at. And it's just, just to where he starts to learn that that rain crossed his neck is what I'm looking for. And I can, I can really over-exaggerate all my maneuvers with him and see get a lot of band out of his neck. So that way later on when I uncross those reins, I don't need quite as much bend out of his neck. I just need him to move off that rein. And so crossing these reins, is, it's a good, good little tool. I've used it a lot. I uh, learned to do this when I was a little kid. Uh, the only thing I'll say about it is if you cross those reins, then you have to honor the fact that you're you're neck reining. You can't slip a finger and cheat, which which is something something I have a tendency to do is slip that finger over there and cheat because see if I if I cheat, like with a squall rein, see he's coming off that rein. But if I cheat like with a squall rein, I'm sending him a mixed signal. I'm pulling on pulling on this side and this side at the same time. So I have to just close my hand around it, own these reins, they're my reins, I bought them, I get to use them. And so I have to just close my hand around that and, and really ride him like he is straight in the bridle. So that's, a, that's just a little, little tip, a little trick there, a little piece of the training deal. Uh, I'll throw in one more thing about crossing these reins like this. Even on a real broke horse, there's times like if you, uh, you know, if you go to a ranch rodeo and things are going to be fast and wild and, and it's maybe a horse hadn't been to town a whole bunch 
um, especially in the horse roping uh, event. I know that's not common most places, but in Nevada and Oregon it's common. Even on a real broke horse that's truly in the bridle with chains and everything, I'll cross those reins sometimes when I know things are gonna get fast and exciting and it just gives me a little a little crutch. Uh, I like to think of it more of a, a cane than a crutch, but gives me a little crutch uh, to where that horse has some more direct rein and, and is able to operate a little better. Um, I'll do this with team roping horses sometimes too, uh, even if they're pretty broke when they're when they're first learning to to be a team roping horse and things are going faster and and a little more exciting than, than what they're used to. Um, I'll cross my reins sometimes the first. I don't know, depending on the horse, somewhere between the first 10 and 30 outs out of that team roping box, I'll cross my reins a lot of times. Um, so that's it, just wanted to show that little deal. Thank you so much to, to the Patreon crew. You guys are the reason we're able to do this and uh, and do the extra things and, and, and really do all the YouTube videos too. We wouldn't be able to, wouldn't be able to make it work without you guys. So thank you so much.